CIETNCERT presents Audiobook of Mathematics for Class 6 Chapter 9 Data Handling Page 184 Part 1 9.1 .1. Introduction you must have observed your teacher recording the attendance of students in your class every day or recording marks obtained by you after every test or examination. Similarly, you must have also seen a cricket scoreboard. Two scoreboards have been illustrated here. Name of the bowlers, overs, maiden overs, runs given, wickets taken. These are the columns. A. 10 2 40 3 B. 10 1 30 2 C. 10 2 20 1 D. 10 1 50 4 We have another scoreboard. Columns are Name of the batsman Runs Balls faced Time in minutes. E. 45, 62, 75. F. 55, 70, 81. G. 37, 53, 67. H. 22, 41, 55. You know that in a game of cricket, the information recorded is not simply about who won and who lost. In the scoreboard, you will also find some equally important information about the game. For instance, you may find out the time taken and number of balls faced by the highest run scorer. Page 185 Similarly, in your day-to-day -day life, you must have seen several kinds of tables consisting of numbers, figures, names, etc. These tables provide data. A data is a collection of numbers gathered to give some information. 9.2. Recording data. Let us take an example of a class which is preparing to go for a picnic. The teacher asked the students to give their choice of fruits out of banana, apple, orange or guava. Uma is asked to prepare the list. She prepared a list of all the children and wrote the choice of fruit against each name. This list would help the teacher to distribute fruits according to the choice. Raghav, banana. Preeti, apple. Amar, guava. Fatima, orange, Amita, apple, Raman, banana, Radha, orange, Farida, guava, Anuradha, banana, Rati, banana, Bhavna, apple, Manoj, banana, Donald, apple, Maria, banana, Uma, orange, Akhtar, guava, Ritu, apple, Salma, banana, Kavita, guava, Javed Banana If the teacher wants to know the number of bananas required for the class, she has to read the names in the list one by one and count the total number of bananas required. To know the number of apples, guavas and oranges separately, she has to repeat the same process for each of these fruits. How tedious and time-consuming it is! It might become more tedious if the list has, say, 50 students. So, Uma writes only the names of these fruits one by one, like banana, apple, guava, orange, apple, banana, orange, guava, banana, banana, apple, banana, apple, banana, orange, guava, apple, banana, guava, banana. Do you think this makes the teacher's work easier? She still has to count the fruits in the list one by one, as she did earlier. Salma has another idea. She makes four squares on the floor. Every square is kept for fruit of one kind only. 
she asks the students to put one pebble in the square which matches their choices. That is, a student opting for banana will put a pebble in the square marked for banana, and so on. Page 186 By counting the pebbles in each square, Salma can quickly tell the number of each kind of fruit required. She can get the required information quickly by systematically placing the pebbles in different squares. Try to perform this activity for 40 students and with names of any four fruits. Instead of pebbles, you can also use bottle caps or some other tokens. 9.3. Organization of Data To get the same information which Selma got, Ronald needs only a pen and a paper. He does not need pebbles. He also does not ask students to come and place the pebbles. He prepares the following table. Banana ticks 8. Orange ticks 3. Apple ticks 5. Guava ticks 4. Do you understand Ronald's table? What does one tick mark indicate? Four students preferred guava. How many tick marks are there against guava? How many students were there in the class? Find all this information. Discuss about these methods. Which is the best? Why? Which method is more useful when information from a much larger data is required? Example 1. A teacher wants to know the choice of food of each student as part of the midday meal program. The teacher assigns the task of collecting this information to Maria. Maria does so using a pen and a pencil. After arranging the choices in a column, she puts against a choice of food one mark for every student making that choice. The table is like this. Column 1, choice. Column 2, number of students. Rice only? Marks. Chapati only? Marks. Both rice and chapati? Marks. Page 187. Umesh, after seeing the table, suggested a better method to count the students. He asked Maria to organize the marks in a group of ten, as here. Column 1, choice. Column 2, tally marks. Column 3, number of students. Rice only, 10 and 7, 17. Chapati only, 10 and 3, 13. Both rice and chapati, 10 and 10, 20. Rajan made it simpler by asking her to make groups of 5 instead of 10, as given here. Column 1, choice. Column 2, tally marks. Column 3, number of students. Rice only, 5552. Five, that's 17. Chapati only, 553. Five, five, that's 13. Both rice and chapati, 5555. Five, 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 that's 20. Teachers suggested that the fifth mark in a group of five marks should be used as a cross, as shown by a diagonal cross. These are tally marks. Thus, four vertical lines with a diagonal cross and two vertical lines shows the count to be 5 plus 2, that is 7. And four vertical lines with a cross and four vertical lines with a cross shows 5 plus 5, that is 10. With this, the table looks like choice, tally marks, number of students, rice only, 5552-17 Chapati only 553-13 Both rice and chapati 5555-20 Example 2 Ekta is asked to collect data for size of shoes of students in her class 6. Her findings are recorded in the manner shown here. 5, 4, 7, 5, 6, 7, 6, 5, 6, 6, 5, 4, 5, 6, 8, 7, 4, 6, 5, 6, 4, 6, 5, 7, 6, 7, 5, 7, 6, 4, 8, 7. Page 188. 
Javed wanted to know 1. The size of shoes worn by the maximum number of students. 2. The size of shoes worn by the minimum number of students. Can you find this information? Ekta prepared a table using tally marks. Column 1. Shoe size. Column 2. Tally marks. Column 3. Number of students. Shoe size 4. Tally marks 5. Number of students 5. Shoe size 5. Tally marks 5 and 3. Number of students 8. Shoe size 6. Tally marks 5 and 5. Number of students 10. Shoe size 7. Tally marks 5 and 2. Number of students 7. Shoe size 8. Tally marks 2. Number of students 2. Now the questions asked earlier could be answered easily. You may also do some such activity in your class using tally marks. Do this. 1. Collect information regarding the number of family members of your classmates and represent it in the form of a table. Find to which category most students belong. The table columns are Number of family members Tally marks Number of students with that many family members. Make a table and enter the data using tally marks. Find the number that appeared A. The minimum number of times B. The maximum number of times C. Same number of times 9.4 Pictograph A cupboard has five compartments. In each compartment, a row of books is arranged. The details are indicated in the adjoining table. We have the picture of a table with column 1 as rows and column 2 as number of books. Row 1 has 4 books, row 2 has 5 books, row 3 has 2 books, row 4 has 8 books, row 5 has 3 books. Page 189 Which row has the greatest number of books? Which row has the least number of books? Is there any row which does not have books? You can answer these questions by just studying the diagram. The picture visually helps you to understand the data. It is a pictograph. A pictograph represents data through pictures of objects. It helps answer the questions on the data at a glance. Do this. Pictographs are often used by dailies and magazines to attract readers' attention. Collect one or two such published pictographs and display them in your class. Try to understand what they say. It requires some practice to understand the information given by a pictograph. You were just listening to the audiobook Mathematics for Class 6. Narrator Gaurav Marva Assistance in Production Soumya Malik Producer Vimlesh Chaudhary Presented by CIET NCERT New Delhi, India